Joni, tell me, what were your first impressions of this book? I mean, for me, the front cover. Like, it's beautiful, the Australian native plants, but I just think she really captures the um, mystery of Australian rural life. You know, like, I mean, I've lived in rural countries on and off throughout my life, but living here in Sydney, it, we don't really know what it's like. And I think it's easy to idealise that lifestyle. I know I do. I'd love to live out in the bush. And I think what really got me at the beginning of this book is just the way that she does that through all the generations. Mm, it's incredible. And it basically starts, it's it's a dual timeline story, basically, kind of well actually a triple timeline in the end but we're uh going from 1959 where this uh this murder essentially happened and this this town was sent into turmoil and then it kind of flips back to sydney 2018 where jess is trying to figure out you know <laughs> how her family's connected to this there is obviously lots to love about this book uh the way that kate writes mystery the way that she connects Australian native landscapes and uh, towns. It really makes you feel like you're kind of embedded in the story. Mm. What did you love most about this? I think what I love about it is that there isn't a character there that isn't flawed. Mm. And, you know, some of the characters might turn in judgment on each other, but the narrative never does. It's like it's all, she's always um, taking into account the fact that they're all human, they're all doing their best and let's not just like cast judgment just yet. I just, I really loved that. You could get to know these characters more fully rather than having them kind of um, typecast as the goody or the baddie. I loved that. Yeah, it was so true. And yeah. one of our favorite characters, Percy, who yes. we actually meet in the very first chapter. I, I fell in love with him immediately. And then when everything comes to light, you realize, you know, this is not a spoiler, by the way, um, you realize just like not everyone is how they are on the surface mm. and secrets, secrets are definitely kept. And I think that was, that was a huge part of the story. I kind of want to say a little bit what happens. I'm not going to spoil it, but this murder investigation, basically a, a mother and her three children wind up dead they were having a picnic and mm. a local finds them and there's been no foul, foul play they, they don't know how they died essentially mm. and she just had a fourth baby and the baby was missing so that's how it all starts it's just such a complicated story and we learn about all these characters and all these locals and every kind of person comes to light but there is this sense of secrecy in the town that has literally been going on for 70 plus years yeah and you've got characters that are keeping secrets you think for the good of their families you know self-preservation you've got other people keeping secrets that i i can't see the logic of like just kind of cruelty what did you how did you see the role of secrets kind of play out throughout the book and how kind of i don't know powerful did you see that kind of sense of secrecy play out it really highlights the fact that secrets cause a lot of damage mm. people suffered i would say till like for their entire lives because of some of the secrets that were kept there were some it's, generational yeah what we recognize now as generational trauma but yes. they wouldn't have had words for in the 50s. And especially like we were talking about the mental health ramifications of those secrets. Mm. It's a really big deal. And you've got people that were characters that were blamed for this murder or, you know, thought, even though no charters were ever laid, thought mm. to have committed this terrible crime. And in yep. the end, they weren't. They weren't the people that did this. And yet everyone who knew them everyone who had kept that secret had passed away and it's like they never got that sense of justice mm. that actually really hurt me i think yeah there was that real sense of like this was not like a murder mystery that was like oh and the bad guy gets caught and there's justice there there i i don't think they're really in a lot of ways there wasn't a sense of of closure at the end because it had been so long yeah did you think any of the secrets that they kept were 
justified? Could you see, like, if, obviously, <laughs> you know, I don't want to imagine being in the story, but could you see yourself doing the same thing as some of these characters? I don't know. I think I'm honest to a fault <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> there would have been no secrecy with you. You would have been like, well, no. this is what happened. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. What about you? It's very interesting what you say about small towns and rural life because we really don't know how it's like. And I think the individualism that we have now in terms of like we have our own family units and we, you know, have our kind of friends maybe and colleagues, but we're not living in that real kind of village, rural living that perhaps people did in the 50s. Like people in that town relied on each other in a way that I don't think we do anymore. Um, so I think it's almost like comparing apples and oranges. I don't know what I would have done because I've never grown up in that context. I like to think I would have done the right thing, but then you think what is the right thing because you've got 20 different characters with 20 different versions of what they think is the truth and what happened. I don't know. And I think that brings us to the point of like, as Christians, what is the right thing to do in that situation? Like you try and be honest and you try and do what you think is right. And then as we saw for some of these characters, 70 years down the track, what they thought was the right thing at the time turned out to be the, you know, the worst possible thing they could do because they, yeah. they, they had a skewed version of reality. Oh, I struggled with that. I really did. It's a lot. Like I felt like, you know, in the Bible it says, bringing the darkness into the light lots of different ways it said talks about mm. not keeping things in the dark and when you track back to the very beginning once you know how this ends <laughs> when you track back and think if a couple of people would have just told the truth yeah this wouldn't have happened it wouldn't have been like this that's actually very interesting bringing the darkness into the light because i feel like a lot of this book literally and metaphorically was in the shadows under the cover of darkness under the cover of the the big leafy trees and you know it's oh, yeah it, it's really it's really quite powerful actually um i want to talk about the actual mystery because i love i love a good mystery book like mm. love 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 i am the person that suspects everyone from the start if i know i'm getting a mystery i'm like okay I'm not going to be caught out by any of you. I am going to suspect you and you and you and you and you. And it was so hard to do this with this book because I love them all. Because I'm like, oh, wow, you are incredible. And I love what you do as a character. And yet you could be a murderer. Mm. It was quite interesting. What's your process of trying to figure out a mystery novel? Well, <laughs> generally I just go with it. I just enjoy the ride. I just enjoy the highs and lows. <laughs> But I do try and pay attention to small details. Um, I know for you, though, how early did you pick it? Okay. There was a lot of things to pick, by the way. <laughs> there was like 12 different things That's that true. I did not pick. But one major plot point where I just had a hunch, and I remember texting you a couple of days ago, and I'm like, I, I have no evidence for this. I just believe that this thing has happened. <laughs> and as I go, went on and on, I'm like, the less sure I got, I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not. And then it all came to light and I was actually correct. And I was so proud of myself. So good. I felt like a little detective. And I think that's the first time I've ever guessed anything in a mystery novel because I always try and grab the little details. And honestly, the detail that really pulled this all together and was like the reason for the murder, I never would have guessed it. Oh, no. It's no mentioned way. like once. There's no way anyone can get this. And it was just the way that she tied it all together at the end and just made you literally question everything that you've been reading. Yep. So amazing. Um, I want to quickly talk about also the dual timeline, the from going from the 50s to present time, present time, 2018, present-ish. Um, did you enjoy that? Do you think that she did that quite well? Because that can be a really difficult thing to do sometimes in a book, I feel like. Oh, I thought it was so interesting because you've got this whole other perspective. Mm. The way that she did it was seamless. That's true. Yeah. And even just the way that she, you know, she's a journalist herself, um, the main character, and even the way that she had these internal dialogues about whether, you know, the ethics of the way that Daniel Miller wrote that book. Yes. Okay, let's talk mm. about that. There is a there is a book that's embedded within the book, this true crime. Essentially, a, a journalist wrote about the the murder mm. without, you know, back in the 70s, without knowing 
anything that actually happened, but he wrote it in the form of a novel. And there was this like ethical debate of, is it actually okay to write nonfiction in a fictional way? What do you actually think of that? You are a journalist. You have literally write for a living. Yeah. Do you think it's okay to do that? I think it's really tricky because I think if you add con context, you make the people more relatable. Sure. So I think if you're just writing the facts, people can end up looking like a number and people don't necessarily empathize with them. Whereas when you're adding this context, you're creating an actual character and hopefully that's true to form. I think it's really powerful, but I think you probably need to have little asterisks, you know, a little bit of creative license taken here. Yeah. But I think, you know, it's stories are powerful. And if you just give a list of facts, people aren't going to relate to that. I agree. And, mm. and I kind of think, I, I do wonder though, because Daniel Miller himself said he was privy to even some things that the police weren't privy to. Mm. So I actually think that he had a responsibility to the law to release those things and he didn't. That's true. But in saying that, it made a really good book. So I'm, <laughs> I was happy for it. But yeah, as a character, I definitely felt, yeah, it was a little grey. There was no black and white for sure. It definitely was a little bit shady. But I think that you, throughout the book, you actually hear more about his story and understand why he did what he did. I, I actually think it so, serves as a good reminder for all of us to just be aware of what we're reading because I think truth sometimes is, is subjective. Um, hmm. And... A lot of things are just coloured by the context or life experience that an author brings to a piece. So I yeah, think it's actually true. really important to be thinking about that, especially as journalists, when there is just so much noise and so much media saturated. Um, and we sometimes we don't know what's truth. And there are conflicting uh, voices that kind of being like, well, what am I supposed to believe on this particular subject? Because I'm hearing like 20 different opinions. So I think it's just important to think, oh, well, no one's actually coming at anything from like an absolute truth because everyone has their own life experience and yeah, kind of ways of thinking about an issue. Did you think, what did you think about in the end? I won't make a mm, spoiler. No it's spoilers. Hard. No spoilers. What did you think about when he almost removed himself from the narrative and he changed the way that he was writing it because he found uh, out some things and realised, oh, I don't know. So he, like, made himself a third-person character? Mm. Yeah. I think that just comes back to the ethical. Th that's where, for me, it all started to fall apart. And if you if you read the novel, you will, you understand why because, yeah, he, he found out some things mm. and he's like, I can no longer be an objective or what he thought was an objective party to this. Yeah, there were some ethical things. I think if he acted um, with the knowledge that he had at various points in the novel, uh, that things could have been very different. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, again, lives would have been a little bit easier. If I the think. adults in this book just talk to each other. <laughs> it's all it takes. It all comes back to communication, honestly. Um, is there anything, Joni, we've sung the praises of this book. Do you think there's anything that could have done better? <laughs> No, making Netflix out of it. <laughs> Do you want to be cast? Would you oh, like sure. to? <laughs> to be fair, it was long. It was long. And I, I think I think it was good because it did keep ticking over and with the dual timelines and the the book within a book, you kind of felt like it was still moving along. I did regret that I feel like two thirds of it of it was the setup and then it all kind of came crashing down in the last third. I would have yeah. loved there to be longer of that tearing everything down and then like that rebuilding for our main characters because I feel like it kind of ended on a little bit of an open note which I think is good because like sometimes I feel like those main characters have had <laughs> had had their stories kind of poured out for decades and decades and decades and now they were like reclaiming it and being like actually you don't get to know the rest of our story that's just for us yeah that's cool um which I really liked but I think if it was yeah I just would have liked to have known more I'm like, what happens next? What happens next? What happens next? Yeah, I hear you. That's true. Who would you recommend this book to? Hmm. People who like a good mystery. Mm -hmm. They like to think. But, I mean, the good thing about this mystery is that there's nothing gory. So no. if you like a good mystery but you can't handle gore like me, I'm a bit soft, 
it's perfect. It was sad, mm. but it was not graphic in any way. Mm. It was yep. actually really, um, like, do not have to put any warnings before <laughs> you kind of yep. read this book. It's actually really, really great in that way. Um, I'm the same. I think if you love Australian novels also, um, if you're a fan of people like Sophie Green, who also does, like, lighter books this is this is not a sophie green novel um but if you like kind of being immersed in that australiana kate morton does it so 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 well all right joni i think we'll leave it there thank you so much for coming on the show today thank Uh, you for having me so thrilled to talk to you about this book it's going to be in my brain for a long time (laughs) yeah same i love it